you're sitting in traffic, Wilshire Boulevard. I'm sure it was a lovely uh, <laughs> LA uh, intersection with lots of uh, commotion. Was this your first feature script that you were planning to write or had you written prior feature scripts? I had written many feature scripts. Most of them I had written uh, right after I got out of film school, largely with an eye towards trying to sell them or get them set up uh, uh, to be produced sort of within the studio system. Uh, a few of which I even liked. I mean, I, I, some of them I'm glad I wrote just because I think you need to write a certain number of bad scripts just to get to uh, a better script. Uh, but yeah, I had been writing a lot and with the few things that I had that had been well received, I was still running up against the roadblock of people saying, this, this is a potentially a makeable script, but not with you as a director. You've never directed a feature. Um, no one's gonna take that risk. Uh, and so really after we leave was my answer to that recurring complaint. I was like, fine, if that's the case, I'm just gonna go and make my own movie and get that one excuse out of the way. I will, I will be a feature filmmaker uh, by making my own film and then I can hopefully return to trying to get some of these bigger budget things off the ground. And these were producers that you were pitching that were saying that? Producers, agents, um, you know, just uh, I think, and never by the way in a mean way. You know, I think uh, appreciative of the, the sort of work that I was trying to do and interested in the stories I wanted to tell, uh, but just being frank about just the reality of who they were going to entrust X dollars with and that it would be a, a hard fight for someone who hadn't made a feature, which of course is sort of a, a, a catch-22, right? You know, like, we, we talk a lot about access to the industry and if the access point is how come you haven't already made something, we get caught in this vicious circle, right? Uh, and so I just wanted to break out of that. And for me, the solution was just making a very small budgeted film uh, that I could direct and craft in the way I wanted, uh, which again, I did primarily just as a form of self-expression. You know, I made the movie not as a career calling card primarily, not as a strategic move in Hollywood. I made it because I just wanted to tell that story. Uh, I think the benefit is it now makes me a director uh, in a lot more people's eyes and it has opened more doors, but that wasn't really my, my main reason for doing it. Speaking of, of access, I know this is taking a little bit of a, we're diverging a little bit, but um, what, what are some of the misconceptions, whether they're from students or, or just other people in the industry about access and, and what have you seen from going through this process, being told this yourself that you can't do it? I think if we're specifically talking about feature films, I think the biggest problem with access is just that the business entirely has changed since uh, you know, a lot of us fell in love with movies. There just are so many fewer smaller movies being made by the studios and the big production companies that I actually just think opportunities for newer directors or less experienced directors just aren't even there. I actually think that the, a lot of that access problem is just they're not in the business of making those movies that they used to give to a younger director. They're just making these huge movies. That being said, I definitely think for sure that the overall industry has biases against, uh, and they're structural biases, right? They're biases that come not from necessarily bad intentions, but there are barriers to women, to people of color, for sure. The, I think the hope, right, is that uh, there's an antidote to that, which is, well, we can now make our own content. And I do think that that is a valid idea, that, that the way around the access problem is to make stuff. But I think the funny thing these days is, I don't know that the model anymore is make a low budget film so that you can then jump up to a, you know, a lower mid budget studio movie, because those don't even exist. You know, I, I think that really, uh, I've sort of rethought how I think about my career. I'm just gonna keep making movies. Like I actually don't expect there to be this moment when all of a sudden, now I don't have to self produce or, or at least you know, partially self produce my own movies. Because I don't know that those that that path exists anymore. I really think of making these films like I want to make these movies and I'll make them. The career of directing movies in Hollywood, there's so few films made these days. If you really think about it, that I don't know that that's a path that one sort of incrementally gets to. Sometimes you make a film good enough on your own that you get that lightning strike and you can level up that big way. But I don't think there's any more incremental steps to those big movies anymore because I think there's nothing in between. So when your students come to you with questions about, um, you know, access, are you just telling them that the same thing, basically, just don't try to, like, make something just so you can get to that next level so that someone will, quote, endorse you? I mean, the very first thing that we talk about uh, at Oxy is that the skills involved with filmmaking and with media making, we don't think of those as skills that are exclusively for Hollywood. Uh, I think we live in a world where the ability to tell your story and express yourself visually 
is something that everyone needs to do. Individuals, companies, nonprofits, governments, cultural institutions, all of them need to do that. And so I think of this toolbox artistically and logistically that we're giving people in the classroom as applying to a huge amount of life. When we talk specifically about access to Hollywood, I do tell people, I was like, I don't think that independent, uh, so I don't think that film director is a career. I think film director is an aspiration. I think independent film director is a calling, or I wish I had a better word than hobby, because I don't think it's a hobby. But I don't actually think it's a career path. I think it is a thing one does because you're compelled to do it. But if you really, if you were to corner even who you think of as successful independent directors and ask them, did you pay your mortgage with filmmaking income this year? So many of them will say no. And that's just the reality. And that's not a reason to stop making movies. It's a reason to ask yourself, why am I making movies? Uh, if you are making movies because you just feel compelled to do it, that's the right answer.